So we begin with the, I think this was the first decision that came out of the court. No, they all came the same day. I was same around day, the court. Yeah. But this was the second. Domelevo, uh, Daniel Yao Domelevo, the Auditor General. So as you remember, um, he had, he had uh, surcharged Yao Osafuma for, for, and some people for um, a certain situation. And he was not happy. So he had to go to the court to appeal as the law allows. Then um, as he put in his appeal, he was, the Auditor General was required to bring the documents uh, that he relied on to do his audit and to search out Yao Asafu Mafo. Once they filed the suit um, on the 11th of December 2019 and served a copy on his office on the 13th of December 2019, he was expected within 14 days to supply the documents. He was unable to supply the documents and he gave a number of reasons. And that is why he was cited for contempt and the court found that he had not complied with what the law required him to do and his excuses were untenable yes um dominic what what do you make of what happened and the court's also taking an attitude of being very lenient and saying yes i have found that you didn't comply with the time to do what you had to do but because of your critical nature of your office I don't want to discourage you. I will not sentence you. Cautioned him uh, not to repeat that. Yeah, thank you very much, Samson. I, when uh, I heard of the decision, mm. I was wondering to myself what um, the whole issue was about. Um, but of course, after reading the judgment, I realized that it emanated from the CI, that is CI 102, dealing with the rules relating to the power of uh, the Auditor General under I mean, Article 187 to disallow and search out public officers and in, the, in some cases private persons, mm. you know, when they have engaged in illegal expenditure or expenditure that does not uh, comply with due process of law. And so when I looked at the decision, I realized that the problem emanated directly from CI 1, I mean, a zero, uh, 102. The reason is simply because, as you well know, in civil litigation under CI 47, when a person fails and or neglects to take a step, what usually happens is that they suffer the natural and foreseeable consequences of their failure to do so. So for instance, you, uh, an, a writ of summons and a statement of claim have been served on you as a defendant. You take it and then you are laid back, you don't file the necessary defense and so on, a judgment of, uh, in default of defense will be entered against you. But somehow, for some strange reason, and uh, because of limited time uh, in preparation for this program, I wasn't able to go back into the legislative history to determine why the rules of court committee thought that within two weeks, if the Auditor General failed you know, to file I mean, his processes you know, after having made an appeal, he is guilty of contempt of court, all right? And, and it was specific about the Auditor General. Mm. You know, I thought that it would have said that a party, you know, to a, a disallowance and surcharge, you know, a proceeding who fails to file within two weeks is guilty of contempt of the court. But he says the Auditor General shall file, and if he fails to do so, he's guilty of contempt. Well, right? the, the Auditor General's lawyers con contended that that was an unconstitutional thing done by the <clears throat> done by the rules committee. That is so. But the court said, for as long as that went through parliament and has become law and has not been removed or struck out, even though there's a, a case in the Supreme Court yes. seeking to strike that, that out because his argument was that <clears throat> they have made a provision for criminal sanction yeah. and they are not allowed to do so. But the judge said, well, I don't have an option. That is the law. Until the Supreme Court strikes it out, it applies. He well, didn't comply with the 14 days. The rule says, if you don't comply, you are in contempt. So he yeah, was something. In, in a sense, the judge is right, mm. because that is the current state of the law. Right. But in the old traditions of the common law, mm. you know, um, judges have been known to say, you know, I think that um, the legislature must take a second look at this provision. Mm. Or in this case, the rules of court committee must take a second look at this provision. Because you see, you know, uh, the principle of law is that 
a subsidiary piece of legislation cannot create an offense unless the parent legislation provides for that offense. Okay. All right. So if you, you mm. look at the constitution, mm. the constitution endows the rules of court committee with the power All right. you know, to um, make rules, uh, I mean, for a practice and procedures mm. in relation to the, I mean, a surcharge and disallowance, uh, you know, powers of the, okay. the auditor general. It does not invest them with the power to create offenses. All right. And so for me, I think that, mm. you know, uh, lawyer Tadio Sori is in, uh, you know, very, on very good, you know, ground let's to see. say that it is, let's uh, wait, you let's know, wait, it has Let's wait to hear from the Supreme Court what they will say about that. We don't very want well. to be belabor this very one. Well. Um, uh, but what do you make of the excuse that the Auditor General gave for his reasons not to be able to meet the timelines. No, I, he said the when documents I, were not given to him <laughs> personally. They were given to the secretary of his, and he put it in a pile, and it took one month before he discovered it, after yeah. he discovered it, um, and so on and so forth. Yeah, you I, know? I, I, in public office, that can happen, all right? But that is not excused because, as the judge, the judge rightly pointed out, under the state proceedings, Act, as you well know, you know, service on an officer you know, a duly appointed and uh, serving officer of the agency is sufficient service for purposes of, uh, right. you know, I mean, uh, any court action. So I think... And they excuse that he was preparing the audit for June to Parliament. Well, that, I think those were mitigating factors. And, mm -hmm. and the, the, um, the judge did take those into account, you know, in her sentencing. And mm -hmm. I, I think that she was very magnanimous in, uh, uh, you know, I mean, um, asking, not, mm -hmm. not sending, committing okay. him to prison. All right. Thank you. Yes, um, I feel, Markin, what do you say... Um, you know, the application had been filed by Osafo Mafo and uh, those with him, uh, giving reasons including that the way the Auditor General went about it was an act of malice, he acted in bad faith, um, and that he had been on the media propaganda to tarnish, you know, uh, their image, and he also eventually showed disrespect for the court, and therefore he should be imprisoned for not respecting the timelines? Well, I think um, the step uh, taken by Honorable Asafu Mafu and others in seeking refuge in the court must be commended. It's a commendable step, and it helps in settling the matter once and for all. Here we are, he was being tagged as corrupt, he has paid monies unlawfully to uh, a company and all that. So having taken that step, the expectation, as we all know in our civil jurisprudence, is that all parties will put the cards on the table, exchange documents, and interrogate the issues. It is rather unfortunate, and I agree with uh, Dr. Ayeni, it is rather unfortunate that in this piece of legislation, we have stated that failure to file on time would amount to contempt. Perhaps it's an opportunity for the law to be tested, whether or not that piece of legislation, that provision, is consistent with the Constitution or not. And if it's a special purpose uh, provision, that can also be affirmed. It's for the Supreme Court to perhaps determine this. But the court did not err in coming to the conclusion it came to. I think uh, Ms. Ayeni, Dr. Ayeni was trying to say that in the old common law system, a judge seeing a situation like this could do otherwise or consider some other factors. I'm afraid um, that cannot be the position of the law because if the law says that you, as a high court judge, mm. you are there to enforce. And it says that, look, if the man fails to file, it amounts to contempt. He gets into the box, takes a plea, and you move. Mm. So at the end of the day, I expect that Mr. Osafu Mafu will get the necessary document as he expects from the Auditor General file. Mm. If the Auditor General files it, then they can get into the battle because he also has his reputation. Right. Now, for those who are non-lawyers and for those who may uh, follow the gallery and for those uh, spin doctors, 
it is not as if the Auditor General is being haunted. It is possible for people to think that, oh, because the Auditor General is doing a good work, somebody wanted to imprison him and all that. With all due respect, it is not the case. The law requires that if the Auditor General says charges somebody, he says that somebody has done some wrong, he must have document to back mm. that claim. Mm. All that Mr. Osafumafu is saying is that he is innocent. He hasn't done so. But if you have your document, please bring those documents for us to interrogate so that I can be cleared. There are other civil servants involved. They have their career at stake. <coughs> Mr. Osafumafu is a senior member of this government. If this matter is not properly dealt with, a desperate opposition may want to make a political capital out of why, this. Why right. desperate? Why desperate? Oh, you can say the opposition. I'm saying that okay. because no. I don't have a random meeting yet. You are letting Rick. Oh, please, so, I so, you. so by no. by our no. agreement, we don't spend uh, much time on no, this. No, no, yeah. no. We but are what do you what do you make of this uh, part? Of course, when the auditor general gives a surcharge of one million, you know, a disallowance of one million dollars against you, that's a lot. But you, in your understanding of the law. Does it mean that the Auditor General has said you are corrupt? Or he's simply saying, you haven't provided me the evidence to confirm that this was duly approved and had been spent. Just let yeah. me know. Is it really like you said that he has said they are corrupt? <clears throat> you see, you are talking law. But we operate the law in the political space. Mm. My friends would not want to strictly look at the law. Okay. They would immediately jump into allegation of corruption. Mm. So to me, for all of us to sanitize the system, mm. um, yes, you can't ever prevent yourself from playing to the gallery. But let us also be mindful of the law and fairness. There mm. must be fair play. He actually described the application from Otafumafu and his friends as a vendetta because um, when he discovered that he, the, the process had been served on him and was almost a month late, he wrote through his lawyers to Osaf Mafu and his lawyers, begging them for time so that he can do the right thing. And they didn't pay attention to him. They said, we would rather have you cited for contempt and put in prison. You mean the Auditor General said? <laughs> yes, he said vendetta. Yeah. He said that on radio yes, or yes, in court? Yes, in, in court. court. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Whilst they were accusing him of acting in malice, bad faith, and doing propaganda to tarnish their image, his point was also that I drew your attention. I was late. I was doing A, B, C, and Z. Allow me to do it. And then you said you want me rather to be put in jail. But does the law allow him to do it? Yes, it's allowed that he can write to the party and ask for an extension. Yes, but in the time being, was he not in contempt of court? Yeah, clearly no, by the court ruling he was. Yes. It, mm. No, no, not the court ruling. In the time being, he was in contempt of court. Okay. So how would that amount to vendetta? All right, mm -hmm. all right. Okay. So the the judge said that because of his crucial role as the auditor general, um, though the documents were filed belatedly on the 31st of January, um, 2020, and also because of COVID-19. It is not good to put him uh, in prison, so to speak. Therefore, she decided to caution and discharge and warn him um, to deal with appeals when they come before him <laughs> very seriously. Yeah. And said, there's, there's something that is, very, okay. that is very frightening. Mm. You know, I, I am looking at the actual prospect of sending a serving Auditor General to jail. <laughs> You know, you know, is that that will that mean that after I mean after jail he's coming back to take you know uh, his position as auditor general of the republic? Okay. You know, I, I know, but we need to take a second look at that particular provision. All right. You know, maybe I agree with you. Yes, we, we need to we need to take a second look at it. Okay. Yeah. So now let's